Hi, this is Rick Bowling with Westview Baptist Church. We're glad you're joining us today. I'm outside the church sanctuary. You see the cross in the background. I pray that'll be a visual for you today as we journey to the cross. We thank you for joining us. As you can see, I have transitioned into our church festival here at Westview. If you haven't done so, I want to encourage you to please check out the video that is also online. Uh, it should be next to this video. And it has uh, several songs that our worship leader, Teresa Jessup, have put together. And uh, I think you will uh, truly enjoy and worship through these two songs and a couple of clips she put together. Uh, my sermon will also be attached to the very end of that. So uh, you can watch that straight through if you would like. So we're glad you joined us today again as we take our journey to the cross this Palm Sunday. So today, as we are here at Westview, I want to share a couple of things with you about having a laser focus. It's certainly something that, wow, that we need at a time like this. And when I think about laser focus, I can't help but think about the uh, laser tag that started back in about the mid 80s. And so there was a, a laser gun, it had an infrared laser in it. And of course, when you pulled the trigger, the, uh, your opponent, as well as yourself, had a vest on that if you were, if that laser connected, it would light it up right there on your chest and tag you were it. And so it was a fun game for kids that they were playing uh, back in that day. And it was interesting. The very unique thing about that that game, it came as something that was developed through the Army in the late 70s and early uh, 80s. And it was, it was developed for combat training. And so that they could help them to have a laser-like focus, you know, when they were uh, aiming at their targets. Well, we're going to see today that, that Jesus has a target and on the road to Calvary, a target that's even greater than the cross on the other side of it. But today that's going to be our focus is, is the journey to the cross as well as how he did that with his life and, and how does that work with our lives? How do we uh, just grasp that and it becomes a part of who we are? Because after all, we are to, to be imitators of Jesus according to what Paul teaches us. Now Paul had talked to the Corinthians that. He says, imitate me as, as I have imitated Christ. And in the book of Philippians, in chapter 2, we begin to see a very similar type thing that Paul teaches. We're going to see how he talks about having the mindset of Christ. Uh, we're going to be sharing, for the most part, verses 5 through 11, but I'm going to paraphrase the first four verses for a few minutes because I want to take it, look at four different things today. That it's Gordon Fee um, talks about these in, in his commentary, but I'm just going to uh, share that with you as far as those, those points and we'll expand on it and see how it impacts us. So the first thing we're going to look at today in, in Paul's letter to the Philippians is the principle of love. Very important. Paul begins to talk to the, the Philippians as he opens up this letter and he talks about, you know, he says if, if there's any encouragement, you know, from being united with Christ, if, if any comfort in being united with the Spirit, and he begins to talk about if there's any love in knowing God and, and being in, in a part of, of the body of Christ. And, and, he, and he goes on uh, to, to be united to one another. He says, make my joy complete. He says, by being like-minded, um, having the same spirit. He even says, in vain conceit, don't consider yourself better than others. And so... This principle of love overrides all of this. It's so important. And so there's a few things I want you to see under that principle of love. Is the first thing is that's the very nature of who God is. God is love. 1 John 4, 8 and 16 say God is love. The second thing we're going to look at underneath that is that we see that is God has expressed his love through Christ. I think it's worth reading the scriptures on that in 1 John chapter 4. Uh, it's, it's a very powerful scripture, verses 4, chapters, uh, verses 9 through 10. 
And hear these, these words as he says this. He says, this is how God showed his love among us, that, that he sent his one and only son into the world that, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and he sent his son as atoning sacrifice for our sins. And so we see this picture that God has expressed love through Christ. The third thing I want you to see under the principle of love is that is this, that God empowers us to have the same love. Look what he says in verse 13. He says, this is how we know. He says, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, he says. And so we see this, this picture that we are empowered by the spirit. Verse 16. Hear what he says here. He says, and so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Folks, we do that through the power of spirit. And then finally in, in verse 19, he says, we love because he first loved us. And so Paul begins to, to show us how important this aspect of who God is love, who God is and, and that he is love. And, and the second thing I want you to see is there's a pattern that is so important. And we're going to begin to look at this in verses 5 through the first part of, of verse 8. The pattern is Christ. That's the second thing. Let's look at the verse, starting with verse 5. Now he says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. He says, rather, than, rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and, he, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. So as we look at the scripture, we begin to see some really unique things in this passage. The pattern of Christ of, of having that mindset. He's calling the Philippians to do that. He's calling us to do that. One of the first things we see is that, that Jesus didn't use his divinity for, for gain, for his own advantage. He could have done that. He says he didn't consider equality with God to be grasped, but what he meant by that was, yes, he was equal with God, but he didn't want to take and wield his, his divinity for his own advantage. And so he humbled himself in the form of a man. You see, Jesus, he takes what we would sometimes we say, well, take the high road. And I could really like to translate that. He took the low road, according to what the world would say. He was kind of like saying, you know what? Just let everyone take that fast lane. That's okay. But I'm going to take the slow lane or the correct lane, maybe I should say. I'm going to put others first and me second. I'm going to be servant to all. And I think we, the unique thing we, about this in this passage is we see that Jesus had a laser-like focus beginning from, from the get-go of his ministry. We see in the very beginning there in, in Luke chapter 4, a very unique thing took place. This is when uh, he had just been baptized and he goes and it says he's full of the Spirit and he goes out into the desert for 40 days. At the end of that time, the devil comes and tempts him, tempts him to, to take a, a stone and turn in the bread. And he, te he tempts him uh, with giving him all the kingdoms of the earth. And he tempts him to jump off the highest temple and that the angels will, will, will catch him. And Jesus, in that moment where he had been fasting for 40 days without any food or drink, I believe because he had that laser light focus, he was able to, to take God's truth and say, man doesn't live upon on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the word of God. He tells them that that bread is what's most important. He tells him some other things as well 
he's t- after he's telling them to seek what he would call real food, that you're to worship only God, God the Father. And you're not to test God. You see, Jesus had a laser like focus. And so then we begin to, to look at some of the other things. As soon as that was over, he goes out of the desert. He goes to his hometown of Nazareth. He gets up in the synagogue. He reads the scroll of Isaiah 61. And he says, today the scripture has been fulfilled. And what happens to the hometown boy who has come back? He is rejected by his own people. And Jesus, in that moment, he goes somewhere else to those who will listen. You know, I pray that not only that when there's things that Jesus is calling us to do that that we're not rejecting him. I think in our flesh we all have done that or will do that. But look deep within. I think that's one of the ways we begin to develop that laser-like focus because we can be one of those people too if we're not careful. And that's a part of that self-sacrificial way of of the road to Calvary, of us having that laser-like focus. So important. But I will say also, we're going to encounter rejection as well. And when those times happen and, and those that do that cannot listen we just shake the dust off as Jesus did and we go on to minister and to give his word where those that will accept it so it's interesting he leaves the town and he goes immediately into the ministry uh, first thing he does in, in verses uh, 14 through 30 is uh, or excuse me uh, 31 through 36 of chapter 4 is he uh, delivers a man that's, that's demon-possessed. Next thing we can see him do is he goes to uh, Peter's mother-in-law's house and, and he heals her. And so immediately he's beginning, his focus is so on the kingdom and what God would do in helping others. We see that, you know, he, he's just moved on past that. He knows what who he is and what he's been called to do. And then it's interesting, finally we see something that even takes this a little bit farther. Jesus, it says he tries to go to a solitary place and and suddenly, you know, they're questioning the disciples and it says, wait a minute. He said, you, you must not forget my main purpose. My main purpose I've come to is, is to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. Yes, he was proclaiming with his actions, but with his word. He, people needed to know who he was and who God was. And so we begin to see that. And the, the unique thing that, that Jesus does after that in this laser-like focus is he calls his first disciples. And we see something unique with that is we see that he is relatable. He became, first of all, in human form. And, you know, he wasn't coming in willing, you know, uh, this heavy hand. But he was meeting people right where they were. And so he calls his first disciples, uh, Peter and, and James and John, Andrew, and they're all fishermen. Jesus meets them there and he, he t- they've been fishing all night. He tells them, uh, Peter, and he says, throw your nets back into the, the water. And they're like, what? Oh, come on. And he's like, throw your nets in the water. And they said, okay, if you, if you say so. And of course, they catch all these fish and and he begins to meet them, as I said, right where they are. It wasn't about, hey, I'm Jesus and, and you're nobody. He just met them where they were. We can meet people where they are. We can be relatable. We, relatable. we must have that laser-like focus as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Well, the thing that we saw that was happening is as he was teaching the disciples, he was replicating himself. And that's what happens with us as we begin to embrace his word and and do the things that Jesus did. When we have the mindset of Christ as he's called us to do here and this this pattern that he's given us. You know, Jesus, as we see in the scripture in these verses, that that the sacrifice was of of his self, of who he, 
you know, could have been or wanted to be, uh, may have uh, what the world wanted him to be. And he did it with that laser like servant focus. This is Palm Sunday. When we think about the triumphal entry where he comes and, and the very first thing he does is he tells the disciples, he says, listen, I want, to go, I want you to go and there's going to be a, a donkey that's tied up and I want you to bring it to me. He says, but if anybody asks, tell them that the master, master had asked for it. And so they go and sure enough, that's what happens. And the, the gentleman, he says, why, why do you need this? What are you doing? And, and they tell him, they repeat exactly the words the scripture says that Jesus told them. Because the disciples were developing a laser light focus as well. So important. We see that triumphal entry. Here Jesus goes and people are, they're putting their cloaks down. They're waving the palm branches. They're saying, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. Hmm. Five days later, they're crucifying on that cross. Jesus had to have a laser light focus ultimately to be able to, to take that road. And that, that sacrifice, that humility, he's calling us as well. We think, how can we do that in the midst of our day, what we are encountering with the, the COVID-19, all the different things that are taking place? And, you know, I think one of the things is we have to remember Jesus was always teaching, as Paul did, put others before yourself. I think one of the things that we can see with where we are today is relatable in this area. I uh, just saw where uh, Samaritan's Purse, they have set up a command post in New York and uh, the, the person that was representative there that was in charge, um, he had just been back from Italy. They have one there as well. And they set this thing up with, I mean, they knew where they were going. They had this laser light focus. They've got 58 beds. They have... Uh, 65 staff, medical personnel, um, a whole team to trying to help out with the efforts of those who are struggling. And they asked him, he said, well, the, the news reporter said, what can we do back in North Carolina? And just with that laser light focus and that service, he said, you can begin with doing the things that we're all being asked to do. I call them the rules of engagement. He said, you know, when you go somewhere, uh, if you're going out, put that mask on. Uh, make sure that if you don't have gloves on, that you, if you touch something, that you wash those hands, you disinfect them. Uh, some of the other things, the social distancing of six feet or more. If you have to go out, make sure that you, you are doing those things. Abide by the rules that the authorities are giving us right now. He says, we're fighting this thing. And so let's be, let it be sacrificial about, not just about our needs, but about helping others. And so we see this, there's a lot of different ways that we can do this. We can, we can have that putting others before ourselves, that mindset of Christ. We can help others. There's, there's those who, who need food, those who lost their jobs. There's provisions that need to be done. We certainly take the appropriate measures uh, there's feeding stations, there's different ways to do that uh, so that are safe. But yes, we help those we give. We, we may can help. He even talked about helping the healthcare professionals on the front lines. I'm sure there's, there's ways to give through Samaritans and other ways to do that. Acts of kindness. We have people in our own neighborhoods. We can focus on gratitude Versus what we are missing maybe right now. We can focus on uh, positive things. And I cannot think of anything more positive than the Word of God. David said, I will meditate on your Word day and night. I encourage you to do that. There's nothing that is more comforting, soothing, instructive, and powerful than the word of God. Allow it to take root in you. 
And you too will have a laser light focus. The worries of the world and all the things around us won't consume us. Yes, there's things that we need to be precautious about. But our ultimate goal that we're going to see today is the glory of God. And so we're coming to that. Remember that with this laser light focus. You know, things that we're being encouraged to do is being productive and setting schedules while we're at home and we're not able to go out and things that we can do around the house and those kind of things uh, for our mental attitude, our, our physical, you know, fitness, you know, uh, staying in shape, walking, uh, whatever things you can do safely, connecting certainly with one another by telephone, by FaceTiming uh, through the computer, the different avenues that we have. And we ask, but but this mind of Christ, this this self self sacrificial thing that we've seen that Jesus is like. What about when I'm weak? How do we do this? Well, notice what we said when I said when I am weak. If we can just begin to remember that that we have been endued with something greater than ourselves, and that brings us to the third point: is the power of the Spirit. I want you to hear what. In the last part of, of verse 8, this is what Paul says. I'm, I'm going to read the whole verse again. It says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. He says, By becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. What we have to understand with Jesus is he was, he, he was given the Holy Spirit from the very beginning, but we see in at the beginning of his earthly ministry, just prior to that, that at his baptism, this beautiful expression, we see that, that says the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove. And that's when God said, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. Jesus was the model and example that we're talking about, that the Holy Spirit came on him. And then we see at the Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, that the Spirit came for everyone. For all of us, for you and me. And so it's, it's on us as well. And so we have that within us. If we will tap into what God has given us to do the things that he's calling us to do. The spirit, also it brings unity within the body of Christ so that we're not doing this uh, just with God alone, but we're doing it as, together. This incredible fellowship of the spirit that we can work together as a body that same spirit as we see in the scripture is the one that enabled him with a laser light focus on this journey to the cross to die the most painful and humiliating death for us, for you and me. It's the same spirit that helps us and enables us to die to self and to live for Christ And so what I want to encourage you to do right now is, as we're in this week, is, is we're at this, this new place in our life that we've never been. Let's focus on the meaning and the purpose of what God is doing in the midst of this. Asking the Lord, what do you want to, what do you want to teach me? What do you want to re reveal to me about myself and show me? Hmm. How can I bring glory to God? You see, that brings us to the last point. The ultimate purpose that God has is, is the glory of God. And so we see that, that Jesus, he knew perfect obedience and, and he brought glory to God that way. And as we see here, as Paul has given us these instructions, these are the very things that bring us to that place of embracing God's love, of, of choosing the mind of Christ. He gives us that choice. Allowing the Spirit to lead us. And when this happens, we will bring glory to God. Christ will be exalted. So that the scriptures that we see here in verses 9 through 11, this, hear these words. It says, therefore, God exalted him in the highest place and they gave him the name that is above every name. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow 
in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will acknowledge, that is, they will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want to close with this story. There's a little town in Spain called Zahara. Zahara de la, la Sierra. And this, uh, this town is, the byline when I read this article, talked about Zahara cuts itself off from the world. I thought, I just, I thought what's that all about? And so I began reading the article and it all had to do with the COVID-19 uh, virus that we have. Now, it's interesting. This has been a fortress in Spain for years and years. And this town has been used to fending off uh, things in the past. During the medieval ages, uh, we see that the, when the Moors and the Christians were, were fighting, they were able to, to come out of that when uh, the War of 1812 and uh, a time that the French came in and robbed them, they survived that. And so when states, uh, when Spain's state of alarm was sounded, the very first thing they did was they have five entrances, entrances to their town and they closed four of them so that they could control who's coming in and out of their town. And so when these trucks come in bringing supplies, they know the people, they they check it out. They just totally disinfect the truck. It's some great photos. And uh, with however, what well, I don't know what materials they're using, but they said it's like taking a sheep and dipping it to clean it thoroughly. And not only do they do that, they, they go through their towns and they, they clean the town uh, two times a week. They spray the trees down um, periodically. Again, trying to be proactive with this virus. Zahara is having a laser-like focus, if you will, in being proactive of cutting off their self from this virus coming in from the world. You see, Jesus, he was in the world, but not of the world. He calls us to do the same thing with a laser-like focus to be proactive. And I pray that as you've heard this message today, that this will be an encouragement to you this week as we journey to the cross and beyond to the resurrection on Easter Sunday. I pray that this in the name of Jesus. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you that, Lord, you have given us hope and direction, Lord, uh, through your, your servant, uh, Paul, Apostle Paul, Lord, mainly through Jesus. And Lord, the sacrifice that he's given us with a laser light focus on his journey to the cross, Lord, so that all who believe, Lord, can have eternal life. Lord, I pray that someone has heard this message today and that someone, if that is you, I pray that as he is knocking on the, the door of your heart, that you will open that door and invite him in to be your Lord and your Savior, so that you too may confess and, and bow to him that for the glory of God and your life may become a sacrifice as well. Say yes and, and become that disciple in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for joining us today and I pray blessings on you this week as you continue the week of uh, Palm Sunday and the Holy Week as we enter into the resurrection of Jesus next Sunday. God bless you.